What's up, Well That's Good fam? Welcome back to Well That's Good Wednesday. I'm so excited for today. I have a good friend on the podcast, one that you might know of yourself. I have Madison Pruitt, and I'm so excited to have a great conversation. Maddie, welcome to the podcast. I am so excited. This is seriously like one of my favorite moments. You're one of my favorite humans and I've been listening to this podcast for so long. So thank you for having me. Yes. And I'm so stoked for everyone who hasn't seen this book. Maddie has a new book out called Made for This Moment. I actually got to write the forward to this book, which was such a privilege for me because this girl has a lot to say that will impact your life. So congrats on your book. That's amazing. It's been crazy. It's been so wild. I feel like I should have asked you like a million questions before, like before the book came out. I'm like, I had no idea what to expect, but honestly, God has been so good and so yep. faithful and just honestly like crossing my path with women like you and yep. just having such amazing people just being able to speak into this book and spread this message. Um, and it's a message that I feel like so many people need to be encouraged by. So it it's has awesome. been a whirlwind of emotions. So awesome. Did you ever think that you would write a book one day? Honestly, no. And what's crazy is I actually started writing this book. I don't even know if I shared this with you. I started writing this book before I went on The Bachelor. Wow. So I started writing this book when I had actually just come out of a four year relationship with the person I thought I was going to marry. Wow. And it was like one of the lowest seasons of my life Mm -hmm. because I just came out of that relationship. And at that time, every single one of my friends got married. So I was like going through a heartbreak and I was having to, at my lowest of lows, like learn to mm-hmm. celebrate everyone else at their highest of highs. Wow! And so I just remember during that season, God just laid a message on my heart and just was like, I want you to start writing. Hmm. And I remember that time I was like, what? Like, who am I writing for? You know, no one knows like what? Like I, I had no idea what it was even, f- even for, or like what it was even going to be about. But I just felt like I was supposed to start writing. Wow. And when I came off The Bachelor and I got reached out to by agencies and publishing companies, that was kind of when I picked the message back up and I was able to really incorporate like what I had learned in that past year and like, you know, what other people had been asking me and, you know, the questions that I could see so many wrestling with and struggling with. And I got to kind of incorporate that back into the message, but it's crazy like thinking back because it was such like, I don't know. I feel like a warm up and kind of like getting me ready before the book release and and even before like anyone even knew who the heck Maddie was um, yeah. just kind of in a season of my life when I was going through a lot of pain mm-hmm. and I just felt like God was putting just a lot of messages on my heart. And so I just started wow. writing then. But That's I awesome. never in a million years as a young girl would have imagined that I was going to write a book. I wow. didn't feel like I really had anything to share. I was like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of a ball of energy. I'll just like walk around and just put smiles on people's faces. But I never imagined that I would be able to like have the discipline to sit down and actually write a book. Yeah. Because it's intense. That's awesome. That is so cool. Well, you know, it's cool. I think God does often give you a warm up lap. I think normally you just don't realize that's what you're doing, you know, and normally it is in some of the hardest seasons of your life that the greatest things come from. And so if you're Mm. in the hardest season of your life and you're listening, don't count this season out. This could be God stewarding something in you that's going to eventually come out of you and touch many people. Um, Well, I have to ask you the question I ask every single person on this podcast, and that is, what is the greatest piece of advice that you've ever been given? I know it's an intimidating question, but first thing that pops to your mind. Okay, so the first thing that pops into my mind, because I've been given a lot of great advice throughout my life. Honestly, with having my dad as my coach, I feel like he's told me a million things that I could run with. But I remember this one piece of advice my mom told me. Uh, it was a little bit ago, and it's probably from someone else. But <laughs> So it's probably <laughs> a quote okay. from someone. But, uh, but she always would tell me, everything worthwhile is uphill. Hmm. And I just remember that sticking with me. And I actually shared it when I was on The Bachelor hmm. because I just remembered – you know, there was, it was reaching the end. And I think there was like three girls left in the season. And I just was facing so much pressure and just obstacles and just like, God, where are you moments? And I just remember that quote, like coming back to my mind, Mm -hmm. like everything worthwhile is uphill. And I just think about life and I think about, you know, our identity, our purpose, um, you know, what we've been called to do, make a difference in this world. Like everything that's going to be worth it is going to come with a fight and it's going to come with a struggle. 
struggle and a wrestle. And it's not going to just be like handed to you and placed in your lap without a fight and without a wrestle. And so, you know, I think about, you know, me and my personal life and the things that I've wrestled with and struggled with and, you know, even choosing to save myself for marriage and choosing to fight for purity. Like that's something that has not been easy. That's been really hard. And, you know, in where I'm at, with my life, going on The Bachelor, coming off The Bachelor, so many labels placed on me, so many pressures around me, so many opportunities to compromise who I am and to settle or to give in to, you know, the pressures or temptations around me. It would have been really easy for me in those moments to lose sight of who I am and who God has called me to be. And so even in those moments, you know, fighting for my identity, even when it wasn't popular, even when it came with a great cost. And so I just, I've really clung to that, you know, that quote and that statement that my mom kind of shared with me and my sisters a while ago. And it's funny, we kind of use it as a joke in our family now, like even like the slightest little things, like, I don't know, we're like cooking and it's taking longer than we expected. And my mom's like, everything worthwhile is uphill. And I'm like, okay, mom. But yeah, that's such good advice. I love that. I love how you've been talking about like knowing who you are. And I think that's a big struggle for so many people in our generation because the whole world is going to tell you who you are or who you should be or who you're supposed to be or who the version of you that would be the most liked and all the things. And yeah. you have such a conviction and like, no, this is who I am. This is what I'm called to do. This is what I'm not going to do. How did yeah. you come to the place of knowing who you truly are and kind of giving advice to people who are like, I would love to be like that, but I don't know who I am or how to even figure that yeah. out. Yeah. I think it honestly goes back to kind of what you were even touching on earlier when you were encouraging those listening You know, if you're in a painful season right now or a hidden season right now or a waiting season right now, oftentimes those are the very seasons that God uses to refine us, to shape us, to prepare us Mm -hmm. uh, for what he has for us. And I look back to those seasons of my life, you know, the seasons where it was extremely lonely or extremely painful, or I felt like I was in such a waiting and hidden season, like, God, where are you? Why does it seem to work out for everyone else? Why Mm -hmm. does everyone else seem to get the blessing and the miracle that I'm so desperately wanting and so desperately praying for and hoping for? And oftentimes it's in those seasons where that that foundation is being laid and I, and I'm growing strong right like yeah. where that foundation is being laid of who I am what I really believe what my purpose is and usually it's out of the spotlight usually it is in those hidden seasons because it's when no one's around where you're really laying that strong foundation to be able to stand firm when everyone is around yeah. and I talk a lot about that you know, in my book, it's just the power of, you know, the private life. And for me, it was in those quiet alone moments with God, where I really asked myself those tough questions of who am I? Who have you called me to be? Who do you say that I am? So we're all my sleep people again. All right, now that I got your attention again and you love sleep just as much as me, I want to tell you more about the Helix Sleep mattress because y'all, this is the real hookup. Go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie and this is how it works. You're going to take a two minute quiz to it'll match your body type and whatever your sleep preferences are to a great mattress. They have mattresses that are unique for everyone. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses. Mattresses is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Mattresses is great for spinal alignment. So really, truly, it helps you you with everything no matter what you need they even have helix plus mattresses for plus size sleepers so whatever your sleep needs are they have it you can even take the quiz with your spouse and y'all can match it together because maybe you like sleeping differently and they can help fit both of your preferences we actually chose the helix midnight mattress because i don't like it to be too soft or too hard so it's just the perfect balance for both of us you also can put in if you're like a stomach sleeper a back sleeper a side sleeper and get the best mattress for you helix is awesome but you don't have to just take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by Wired Ma- Magazine and other magazines. Um, they have incredible reviews. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. Take their two-minute quiz. They'll match you with a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They also have a 10-year warranty and you'll get to try it for 100 nights risk-free. That's pretty amazing if you ask me. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. So what's the harm in doing this, y'all? You might as well try it out but go ahead and do it today because there's a great offer go to helixsleep.com slash sadie and get up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners here on the Will that's good podcast that's helixsleep.com slash sadie for up to 200 dollars off and two free pillows 
I think especially in the day of social media and there's so many confusing and mixed messages yeah. and, you know, low standards and opportunities to compromise and questions of purpose and misplaced sources of identity. So many things, just so many obstacles in our way and so many things to overcome. And it is going to come with a fight and it's not going to be easy. But I think for me, it really took me kind of just having this moment. I remember I was freshman in college. Like it wasn't this like groundbreaking moment. It was literally me alone in my dorm room mm -hmm. with God and freshman year of college. And I just, I remember just weeping before the Lord as I saw so many mm -hmm. of my friends who I'd come into college with really start compromising and start becoming people that I knew that they weren't. And I knew I was going to be faced with a lot of temptations and a lot of moments where, you know, that was going to be my reality, where a lot of people right. were going to be, you know, pressuring me to compromise and pressuring me to settle. And I didn't want to just let my feelings kind of take over in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have something that was so much deeper and so much more like meaningful. And so for me, it was kind of presenting myself with some scenarios like, okay, I know I'm going to be faced, you know, in a situation where I'm going to be alone with a guy mm -hmm. in a room who is telling me all of these things. And how am I going to respond? Yeah. I know I'm going to be, you know, in situations around a lot of my friends who are going to be participating in something that I don't feel at peace. And I don't feel, you know, like I'm supposed to be participating in, but they're yeah. doing it. And I'm going to feel that tension of, do I give in? Because I don't want to be that weird one who's right. like not participating. Right. I knew that there was going to be a lot of temptations and pressure pressures. And we all face that, you know, in different seasons of life, our pre the pressure to be successful, the pressure to be beautiful, the pressure to fit in, the pressure to be loved, the pressure to be accepted. And I knew in that moment, my whole life, it has been so easy for me to perform and to mm -hmm. come from this place of lack, constantly latching on to people and to things and to, you know, uh, moments of opportunity or moments of, 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 I don't know, someone trying to give me validation and kind of hoping for those moments to define me and to give me what I need uh, to tell me who I am, to stand firm. And for me, I just had this moment with God and I was like, you know, I don't want to come from a place of lack anymore. Like I want to yeah. know who I am. I want to know why I'm here. And mm -hmm. I don't want to depend on other people to tell me that and other people to give me that. And yeah. so in that moment, I was like, I'm going all in with you. And since it. then, I really, truly like have been able to step into any and every environment from a place of belonging and from yep. a place of abundance and knowing that it's not by my strength or by my confidence or by who mm -hmm. I am, but who yep. Christ is in me and what he's done for me and the yep. strength that he gives me and staying rooted in that and grounded in that. And so it was that moment that changed everything, but it's the day-to-day -day moments of continuing to root myself in God's yes. word and continuing to let the Holy Spirit spirit fill me with his truth and just what you know the spirit gives just to enable me and empower me to be able to go out and do what God has called me to do and so it's it's one moment that changes everything but it's the everyday moments of you know that quiet alone time with God yeah. that really gives me what I need to be confident to stay true to myself and to not let the labels and the things of the world define me Come on, girl. Just preach for a second. That is so good. <laughs> I'm like, yes and amen. I love it. I love that so much about you that you know so much about who you are because you know who you belong to. You're so rooted in Jesus yeah. and who he is to you. And I love how like when I ask you who you are, what's amazing about it is you don't say anything about The Bachelor. You didn't say anything about your book. And a lot of people might know know that yeah. about you. They're like, oh yeah, Maddie, the girl from The Bachelor. Maddie, the girl that wrote the book. Maddie, the girl that preaches or speaks. Like that's yeah. who they know you to be, but that's not who you are. That's what you've done. Mm -hmm. That's what you get to do, but that's not who you that's are. Good, and I think yeah. that's a good point for people to hear is like, you didn't go to the things that you've done. You went to who you are. And the mo and why that makes you who you are and not The Bachelor is because even though The Bachelor is a big deal, it's not a bigger deal than the moment you were on your knees in your dorm with Jesus. Yeah. And for people yeah. to see that, that like you, this beautiful, popular girl who loves to wear Jordans and play basketball and has all these <laughs> friends, it's like yeah. Jesus is the most important thing in my life. It's more important. Yeah. That moment for me was more pivotal than any other time in my life. And it's yeah. the same. Everybody has that opportunity. Not everybody has an opportunity mm. to write a book. Not everybody yeah. has an opportunity to 
go on a TV show, but everybody has an opportunity to have a life altering moment with Jesus. And so it's Mm -hmm. so cool to hear you say that. Okay, so obviously you were on The Bachelor and that is a part of your story. I love though how you made the decision to go because you didn't just say, oh, cool, I got picked, let's go. (laughs) What what did that look like in your life? And first of all, how did that even happen? It was crazy, girl. Like I, I can still remember the moment like it was yesterday. So I actually, like I was explaining earlier, I was in that season where I'd come out of that relationship. I was in a season of writing my book And I was in a very lonely and hard season, but I knew that God kept speaking to me. I'm preparing you for something. Hmm. And I was like, what does that mean? Okay. And it was honestly so hard because, you know, again, like you have all these expectations of what you think that's going to look like. Hmm. And I can tell you, I did not expect that to look like The Bachelor. And so honestly, when that opportunity came, I was like, no, I was like, Lord, (laughs) you've actually lost your mind. (laughs) I'm like, let me just tell you that this is not going to happen. And it's funny because I actually had never seen the show before. I was in a small group with a bunch of girls. And I remember I came over, we were going through the book, Single Dating Engaged Mary. And I know, great book. book. And I remember I was going, I I like walk in and they all have like the book on the floor and they're like hunkered down, like watching something so intensely. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? And they were all watching The Bachelor and they had known like some of the girls that were on that particular season. And I was like, why are y'all watching this show? Like I was like low key kind of judging them. Uh-huh. All. <laughs> I was like, why are y'all watching this show? And, um, and, and out of nowhere, you know, they were all like, oh my gosh, like you, you should go on The Bachelor. And I was like, no, like I've never even watched it before. I was like, no, I'm not going on The Bachelor. And I didn't know, but they ended up applying me that night and I ended up, I know it was crazy. And I ended up getting a call from the bachelor. It was like months later. So I completely forgotten about that moment. And it was months later, get a call. I thought it was a prank call. I was like, that's so funny. I just graduated seminary. I don't think I'm the girl you're looking for. Like, I don't think this like makes any sense. And, uh, yeah. And I got the call and honestly, like, again, I just was like, no, I'm not going to do this. And I remember I called my mom immediately and thinking she was going to be like, no, you're not going on that show. Like me and your dad do not support this. Like that's crazy. And instead she kind of surprised me and she just said, you know, Maddie, like, I don't, I don't want you to ever close the door before you take time to pray about it. Wow. And I was like, Hmm. I was like, that's kind of profound. And so me and my family kind of just gathered around and just prayed about it for a long time. Like it wasn't this like overnight emotional like decision. It was a very like thoughtful and intentional, Mm -hmm. um, thing that we really brought before the Lord. And I remember my church was going through 21 days of prayer and fasting and we really like laid it before the feet of the Lord. And just, we were like, okay, Lord, we need you to make this so abundantly clear that this is what you have for us, because this seems so out of the box. Mm -hmm. This does not make sense. This does not look like what we would have ever imagined for my life. So I need you to make it so clear. And at that time, like I already had people who were gossiping about it, people who were no longer wanting to be my friend Mm -hmm. and people who were saying really mean and hateful things. And so I knew that was just a tiny little taste of what I was about to experience. And I could like already start feeling the weight of it. And I just remember being like, Lord, I don't think I'm strong enough for this. Like I, I genuinely don't think I can take this. Like this is too much. I already feel so misunderstood. I already am feeling so much judgment and I haven't even gone on the show yet. And so I was genuinely so afraid, but at the same time, I had so much peace and the Lord made it so clear to me and my family um, through so many different ways. Um, and I and I talk a little bit about it in the book, but yeah, I, I just knew I was supposed to do it. And wow. I, like I said, I had never seen it before. So I really had no idea what I was <laughs> signing up for or doing. Um, but yeah, I look back now and wow. I'm like, it was so God, which is just it's sounds so bizarre cool. to say, but no. No, I, I I totally understand because I feel like even this is totally different, but Dancing with the Stars was similar just because it's a very secular show and people wear yeah. very inappropriate costumes and you're doing sexy dances and it was like right, Christians right. going on Dancing with the Stars and I felt that same, like the judgment, people talking about me, lost a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, and it's hard because you're like, everything in my life is changing, but I'm not changing. Like I need yeah. people, Like I, but it's hard. I get it. 
Friends, who does not love a little jewelry? It just makes every outfit better. But honestly, for a long time, I didn't wear a lot of jewelry because I actually have an allergic reaction to nickel. But I found this brand called Ana Luisa, who's amazing, and they actually have nickel-free jewelry and really cute. These little lightning bolt earrings I actually got from there. Also, their stuff is super affordable. Let me tell you a little bit about this because it really is amazing. Again, that's Ana Luisa. It's spelled A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A. -A. Their pieces are simple, but they're stunning. Also, the prices are so fair. They start at just $39, which is amazing. Prices are even lowered for you right now with 60% off your second item at shop.analuisa.com slash whoa. So if you're going to get some jewelry, maybe even for the holidays, go ahead and get it now because it's beautiful. It's simple, but it's also affordable. I also get necklaces that I love wearing. Really, their brand is just so great. And just pieces you can wear every day. I honestly have not taken these lightning bolt earrings off in like weeks, which maybe I should, but they're so cute. I don't want to. You'll love the affordable prices and designs that they have. It's great for everyday stuff. And plus, one cool thing about this brand is every Friday they have a new jewelry release. And so if you don't like wearing the same stuff every day and you want new things, you could actually go on their website every Friday and check out new stuff. Plus, Ana Luisa backs up their quality with a 365-day guarantee to replace or refund any pieces that you're not 100% satisfied with. That's amazing, y'all. No risk involved. Go Go ahead and get your pieces, try them out, see if you like the brand. I know that you will. I absolutely recommend checking this out. I love their pieces, and again, they're just starting at $39, and they're currently running the biggest sale of the year, so go check it out right now with 60% off the second piece of jewelry or item that you buy. So right now, you'll get 60% off your second item at shop.analuisa.com slash whoa. That's Ana Luisa, spelled A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A. But going on that show and experiencing just like hateful people, I mean, you obviously had a ton of people who love you and support you, but you also experienced a lot of hate, probably friendships that were harsh yeah. or judgmental and things like that, tweets that are mean, Instagram, whatever, whatever you experience. I think those are the things that keep people from actually even doing what they're called to do. Like people have yeah. such a fear of like being misunderstood, being judged, someone being rude to them, that they never actually yeah. do it. But you... You yeah. knew you were going to be misunderstood. You knew you were going to be judged. People were already rude and you still decided to do yeah. it. What do you feel like you learned through that process about God, about yourself, about pushing past like what other people think to do the thing that God calls you to do? So I love that question because for me, I, I don't think that true courage means that you don't get afraid because yep. I think that fear is pretty much inevitable. Like we're human yep. and we're going to have those moments of fearing rejection, fearing what other people think, fearing, am I going to be accepted? You know, am I going to be misunderstood? So many what ifs, right? And and I've been plagued with the what if scenarios my whole life, right? Yeah. And, and so there were definitely, there was definitely fear, but I think true God honoring courage is rooted in conviction and yep. obedience where yep. it says, God, it's it's not about me. It's all about you. Yes. And if you call me to do it, I'll do it. If yes. you call me to stay, I'll stay. Like wherever you lead me, I'll go. And I remember what really changed the game for me because honestly, Sadie, if I'm being real, like I really was starting to care a lot about what people were saying and thinking before I went on the show. And, and I had that moment of just like, okay, Lord, sorry, like you're going to have to choose someone else yeah. because this is really affecting that. me and this yeah. is really hurting me. And I just remember I, I woke up one night and the Lord kind of spoke to me in a very profound and one of those ways where you're just like, ow, like <laughs> that kind of hurt. And I just remember the Lord kind of just like heart check real fast. And I, I just like kind of had this vision of seeing myself in heaven, standing before, standing before God. And I remember in that moment, it was like, I was face to face with God and he spoke to me and he was like, it, it was like, I was presented with one or two scenarios and it was like, okay, so either I can be standing before God and he can show me all the faces of those who are in heaven. And he can say, good job, my good and faithful servant. You walked out your purpose. You did what I called you to do, whatever the cost, mm -hmm. whatever came with it. And because of that, it led to other people's salvation. It led to other people's freedom and it led to my glory. Wow. And the other scenario was, um, him pointing at all these faces saying, 
these people, you know, could have made it up here, but you cared more about what other people thought mm -hmm. than fearing me wow. and trusting me. And, mm -hmm. and I know that's not totally true. Like God will use, if you don't say yes, God will use someone else. And it's not all dependent on me, but I think it was a wake up moment for me mm -hmm. because it was like, wow, I truly am fearing man yeah. more than I'm fearing God. Mm -hmm. And I am choosing to care more about what other people think than about what the conviction God's put on my heart and what wow. he's called me to do. Mm -hmm. and and so it was a wake up moment for me and also this humbling and daunting realization that it's not about me. Yes. Like it's actually not about me yes. at all. Yes. And I was, and I think that's the thing, you know, that a lot of people miss is that we think that when we make things about us, it's coming from a very arrogant and prideful perspective. Like, oh, you know, it's all about me. Look at me. But I think what we forget is, no, we can actually make it about us even in our insecurity and fear yep. because we're still choosing to say like, okay, God, you're a good God and you're a big God and you're a sovereign God, but I still am like afraid and I'm going to choose to focus more on what other people think about me and what other people yeah. are going to do for me. And, and we're making it all about us. And so for me, it was this, you know, realization of I'm a part of something so much bigger than myself. It's not about me. If God is calls like calling me to step out of the boat and I have to leave my comfort and I have to leave my people and what's familiar to me and what makes sense to me yeah. to step towards Jesus Yes. Just as Peter did when he stepped out of the boat, like to take a step towards Jesus and what God is calling me to do, then I'll do that. Yeah, right. And, good. and so I think, you know, I would just encourage those listening, obviously you know, your step of courage may not be going on a reality TV show, going on Dancing with the Stars or going on The Bachelor, but your courage, one step of obedience, one step of courage can lead to other people's right. freedom and can lead that's to right. other people's revelation of who Jesus is. And that's why it's so powerful and why there's such blessing that comes on the other side of obedience. And so for me, I always like to say like true courage, like real courage, isn't just adrenaline or just this rush of emotion, just this fearlessness that's just paired with foolishness that yeah. I'll just go do whatever, whenever it's actually true. God honor and courage is paired with wisdom and rooted in conviction. Yeah. And it says, okay, Lord, you show me where I need to go. You show me when I need to step out. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's all about you. And so that's wherever great. you lead me, like I'm there. That's great. Come on. That's such a good word. It's so cool to hear you say that too, because God did something super similar in my life. Whenever I was like so nervous to get called into this and I was Honestly, yeah. same way, way overthinking what people said about me, way overthinking what people thought about me. And I had this moment where I prayed. and I was like, God, I don't want this. Like, I do not want this. Like, I don't know why you're like um, adding fame to my life. Just like take it away. Yeah. This is not me. And um, yeah. the Lord gave me this vision, which is so weird that you said that. And it was like um, an Instagram account. And the numbers were like going up and I was screaming, no, no, no. Like, I don't want this. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be known like that. Like that scares me. And it mm. was, um, but it was him. It wasn't me. It was like wow. his page. And the Lord, just like you kindly spoke to me, it's not about you. Like, it's yeah. actually not about you. It's so about good. people seeing me, not you. It's about people seeing me through you. And yeah. that revelation that day that, oh, wait, it's not about me. So therefore, it doesn't matter what people say about me because it's actually about you gave me the confidence to actually do what I was called to do. Because I think when yeah. it's on you, that's when you feel like so weighty and like the weight mm -hmm. that you said. It's like so weighty that you're like, I'm not strong enough for this. But yeah. whenever God reminds you, like, it's actually him and he can sustain the weight because he was meant to carry the glory. You weren't meant to. Yeah. The glory will literally Amen. crush you. But the glory for him, like, sustains him. It makes him, like, that's who he is. It's what he's meant for. Then you yeah. can be like, okay, I can do that. I can walk out yeah. to give you glory because you can take mm -hmm. that. And so that's just so cool that he did such similar things in our lives. And that's what he does in everyone's life. I just want to make that note to everyone, like Maddie said. It doesn't matter if your life looks similar to ours. We all have to have moments that we face things that feel like they're going to crush us. Moments where we yeah. have to be brave. We have to have courage. Moments where you have to come to the conclusion that my life, if it's about me, it's kind of meaningless. But if it's about mm -hmm. him... There's so much purpose. So I just love that. Amen. One thing, I, I mean, you kind of like glossed over that I think is so cool is that you went to seminary school and like <laughs> your life before The Bachelor, you were like totally pursuing like a life of ministry and then like, yeah skirt you're on the bachelor and like <laughs> literally i think that that's so cool though because it's a part of your ministry and i think people like people in college freak out they're like 
what am I going to do in life? Am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? And you literally just don't know what life is going to throw at you. So you can't figure yeah. it all out. But when you look back at that time, do you think that was kind of God preparing you in a sense for being made for this moment? A hundred percent. Like I, it's, it's honestly crazy, it's crazy to me how good our God is and how intentional he is and how at the time mm-hmm. you're not thinking about it because you're just being obedient, right? Yeah, like yeah. you're just, you're just saying yes, but it's crazy when you look back and you're like, wow, like that yes in that moment led to that yes, that led to that, le- that yes, that led to where I'm at today. And it's just, it's just crazy when you think about it. This holiday season, I'm trying to be so intentional about the gifts that I give my loved ones because it matters, you know? Gifts make people know how much you appreciate them and love them. And I got a gift for my grandpa last year that I want to give to someone else this year because it was one of the greatest gifts I think I've given. It's called Story Worth. I gave it to my grandpa and he was the perfect person for it because what Story Worth is, is it's an online service that will email your relative, your loved one, a thought-provoking question weekly. And as they think about that thought, they get to write their story. And at the end of the year, It's going to compile all these things that they wrote into like a book form, which is pretty amazing. So my grandpa last year, I gave him it as a gift. And it's been so cool because weekly I get to see these emails come through about these questions that he's getting asked. And I remember one question he got asked was, what was something that you would want your great granddaughter to know? Which is so cool because I got to birth his great granddaughter this year. And I got to see the things that he wants her to know one day. So, I mean, hopefully he, he lives until she's old enough for him to tell her herself. But how cool that we have this document on the story worth account which I think is amazing they ask so many great questions like what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life or if you could see the future what would you want to find out just some fun stuff but some things were like what was the first job you ever had so I'm learning so much about my grandpa that I never even knew after one year like I said story worth will compile all your loved ones stories including photos that they added I get to see so many of my grandpa's photos from his childhood that's so beautiful and even my mom's life as she was growing up so they'll add all that into a beautiful keeps a book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. Seriously, such a special gift. Reading these stories weekly has made me feel so much closer to him and made me realize things that I never would have known had StoryWorth not prompted him to answer these questions. With StoryWorth, I'm giving those I love the most a thoughtful and personal gift, exactly what I'm looking for for gifts this year. So go to StoryWorth.com slash woe and you can save $10 off your first purchase. That's StoryWorth.com slash woe to save $10 off your first purchase. I don't know. I love, I love just really quick kind of what you were saying a second ago, because I think that that's so powerful for people to understand when it comes to confidence, when it comes to courage, when it comes to all these things that feel so daunting, unrealistic and hard in the day and age we're living in today is if it's, if it's according to you, if it's by you, then it has to be sustained by you. And that's the thing is like, I can tell you that from my life and from knowing Sadie, like these are not two individuals that are talking, saying like, you know, we are so confident just because of who we are and just because of all these things and like because of other people's, you know, opinions and validation. No, it's actually quite the opposite. It's like when I felt the most confident and the most secure is actually when I literally die to myself Yeah, and I'm saying, Lord, it is all for you. It is all by you and it's all because of you. And I remember when I was going through college and I was like, God, what am I supposed to do with my life? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I changed my major like five times and I had no idea what I was going to do. I thought, you know, sports broadcasting. I love sports. I thought, you know, doctor, cause like, I want to save, like help people. (laughs) I thought I literally went all over the boards. Like I hit every area and I ended up settling at Auburn university. I ended up setting on uh, communications, which is funny. And at the same time, I went through Bible college through my church and got my certificate in ministry and pastoral leadership. And it's crazy for me to look back at those times, graduating with a degree in communications, graduating with a certificate in ministry and seeing like how it's played such a big role in what I'm doing now. And, and like you said, preparing, and that's why I always, you know, and why I talk about that a lot in my book is just the power of preparation. And it's so cool because I've learned like how you prepare in private will determine how you perform in public. Right. And if you aren't taking the time to really like 
get right with God and make sure that that relationship is the most important thing in your life, then you're not going to have like the confidence and the courage and the ability to say yes when that pressure hits and when you're in the heat of the moment. And, you know, so many people asked me, and that was honestly like when I started writing my book again and kind of picked it back up was because so many people, when I came off The Bachelor, were asking me, like, how were you able to stand firm under pressure? How did you do that? How did you stay true to yourself? Like, I want to do that, but I don't know how to do that. And I got to respond, of course, like, by the power of the Holy Spirit, but also the strength that you saw, that you see in public was directly connected to the decisions I was making in private. And it was who I was when no one was watching that prepared me to be who I was when everyone was watching. And I think that's something that our culture just really doesn't I don't know. I feel like we really worship and praise the like spotlight moments, right? Like everyone is like, oh my gosh, Sadie's on Dancing with the Stars. Oh my gosh, Sadie's speaking at Passion Passion Conference. Like, oh my gosh, like Maddie was on The Bachelor. Oh my gosh, like whatever it is, it's like those big moments and they're wondering how you have like the strength or the wisdom or the courage or the confidence. And it's like, well, it's actually because of what you didn't see yeah. and that, that prepared me for what you yeah. are seeing. Yeah. And I, I just feel like that's so important and something that I want so many people understand that it's actually in those private life moments, those alone moments with God, where you're discovering who you are, where you're investing in yourself, because yeah. when those pressures and those temptations and the weights of life come yeah. at you, what's inside of you is what's going to come out of you. Yeah. So what you allow in, what you invite in, how you invest, it matters. Yeah. And those alone moments are so important for that. And so I just wanted to touch on that, but yeah, it is, it is crazy when I look back and I see just how like every single step and every single yes was so intentional and how it's led to where I am today. It's so cool. I'm so glad you said that. And it's so weird because we haven't even talked about all this. And I just also wrote a book and I wrote all about the private season versus the public seasons Mm. and how so many times we focus so much on our public life when in reality, it's our private life that makes for those public moments. Because I wrote Mm. this book right before I kind of got into ministry and it was called Anonymous so good. Mm, it, I love oh, that book. It's so good. And it talks about so how good. Jesus had that. Like Jesus' yeah. private years are what made for those public miracles and those public moments. And yes, he was God, but he was also human. And I just think that's so cool. Yeah. And you know, this thing that we're saying about private time prepares you for public time is really like a practical thing. Like if you really think about it, you know that. Like both of us play basketball, right? And everyone knows, like, if you don't practice, yeah. you're going to airball in the game and yep. it's going to be embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And so you practice yep. and you prepare and you do your, you know, dribbling drills and you shoot the ball however many times you need to and you get ready because the game is coming. And when the game comes, yeah. you want to know, I'm confident to play this game because I prepared for this game because I practiced yeah. for this game. And it's the same way in life. If you're not reading mm-hmm. the word and diving in and preparing your heart for the things to come, you're going to get in a game time moment it and have to make a game time decision and if you weren't prepared in practice you might kind of regret the times that you didn't prepare yeah and I I I think you you see that all throughout life like in sports in so many different professions you know I I think you see you know pilots who do it you see athletes who do it you see speakers you see actors you see so many different people in life who have been successful who have made a difference um who who have greatness attached to their name right like they they practice before they just like get out there and just hope that they have what it takes right? Like you prepare, you practice. And I just think that, like you said, that's such a practical tool for us in our everyday moments in our everyday life to realize that it's actually the day-to-day moments. It's the small everyday moments that prepare you for the big moments and that give you what you need to be able to stand strong and to stand firm and to stay true to yourself. And the world is hard. And those big moments for you again, may not look like reality TV or may not look like this like crazy thing. It may just be like you're alone in a room with a guy or yep, so you true. are at you know your school lunch table and everyone is talking about that girl who's sitting over there by herself. Or maybe for you, it's you know you have the opportunity to, to cheat or to... I don't know what that looks like yep. for you, but we're all faced with those moments of pressures and we're all faced with those moments of temptation. And what's going to prepare you to be able to stay true to yourself and stay true to your values and your convictions isn't going to be just you having having enough strength in the heat of the moment. I hate to say it to you, 
you, but no one is that strong. I'm no not that one. strong. Like no. Sadie's not that strong. Like we, we take it seriously to make sure that every single day, like we're being fed, we're feeding our spirit. We're surrounding ourselves with, you know, life giving godly people who are pouring yeah, into us and good. building our character. And so all of that plays a huge role in us being able to, you know, stay true to ourselves yeah. when all it's eyes good. are on us. It's so good. And to your point, I think we've been in those situations too. We've all been in the room with a guy or at the lunch table when people are saying that, you know, just because people have big moments, we still have to face those other big moments in life that yeah. those decisions matter and they take you down mm. a different road. I love in your book, yeah. you talk about um, a friend on your basketball team and she wrote on her, was it on her foot or something? Next play on, on her, her shoe. On her yeah. shoe. Mm-hmm. I love that concept. Tell us about yeah. that. Tell us about that. So I had this girl on our basketball team. She was like, she was just the most incredible human. She was that person that you just like always wanted to be around. And I looked up to her so much. I think I was at the time on varsity as like an eighth grader and she was a senior. So she was like, I like clung to her and just always wanted to get just, you know, validation, affirmation from her. And I just looked up to her so much. And it was actually because of who she was off the court that led me to just look up to her so much. And she had this one concept that she lived by because she wasn't like the most talented one on the court. She wasn't the most skilled, but she hustled and Mm. she gave it her all always. And that was something that my dad loved. It was like why she was one of my favorite players um, for my dad. Like my dad was like, I love coaching. Her name was Olivia. I love coaching Olivia because she always gives her best. But because she wasn't the most skilled, she would often make mistakes and just like, you know, little dumb things here and there throughout the game. But I loved her attitude. She, before every single game, would write next play on her shoe. And I remember asking her, because I was like, that's kind of like weird. I don't know. Why are you writing next play on your shoe? And I remember asking her, I was like, why Why did you write next play on your shoe? Like, what does that even mean? And she kind of went on to explain to me, you know, there's going to be many moments in the game, in life, you know, where I'm going to do something, I'm going to screw up and I'm going to mess up. And it's going to be really easy for me to really harp on that yep. and to carry that throughout the game, to really focus on that mistake that I made, to really focus on, you know, letting my team down to really focus on, you know, not being the best that I know that I can be. And she was like, I write next play on my shoe to remind myself that I may have made a mistake here, but I don't want that to cost me the rest of the game. And so she talks about just the power of the next play. And even though I may mess up here, like how can I, you know, flip the page? How can I focus on the next play and be ready for the next play and be the best that I can be for the next play so that it doesn't cost me the game and that it doesn't cost me, you know, it cost my team the game. And so I I just loved that attitude. And I think that it's so applicable to life because I think it's so easy to carry shame to carry guilt, to carry uh, just rejection or whatever it is around and to really focus on that one thing and it it becomes all consuming. It's really hard to let go of it. It's really hard to move past it. And for a lot of us, we never step into the fullness of what God has called us to do and who he calls us to be because we can't seem to let go of our past. We can't move past our past and the things other people have done to us, Mm -hmm. said about us, things that we've done, mistakes that we've made. And we just carry that around and it's costing us our present and it's costing us our future. And so I just thought it was, it was so profound and just a good little analogy for us to remind ourselves like, Hey, That's next great. play, like you got this. And even though, yes, there were some mistakes that happened back there. There were some things that were done back there that maybe you're not proud of that. Maybe you really feel bad about, mm-hmm. or it's, it's been really hard, but like God has something so big and beautiful for you that you're not going to be able to experience if you stay hung up on that. Yep. That's so good. I love it so much. I love that message, and it is so needed. Um, Last thing is I want to talk about you have a YouTube channel, which is so awesome because it's such a great way for girls to get to know you more, relate more, learn more. So I just am so glad that you do that. You had a video come out called I'm So Glad I'm Single, and Here's Why. Mm. And just the title, like I was like, this is awesome. And because so many people ask me about my single season of life. And honestly, mm. every time I talk about it, I'm like, I'm actually, I didn't do it right. I'm kind of ashamed mm. of how I live my single season because I was just constantly like jumping to the next guy, yeah. the next guy, the next relationship, the next. I was like, I didn't stay single. And now that I'm yeah. married, I love being married. I love my husband. He's amazing. I love my family. Wouldn't trade it for the world. But I look back at my single seasons and I'm like, man, I should have like, 
tapped into that a little more. Like the times it was just me and the Lord, the times that like God was really refining me and things and growing me and things. And I hear about other people single times. I'm like, that sounds amazing. You know, like I like that, that's really beneficial to the rest of your life. And so I'm so glad that you're speaking on that because I can speak from it from a place of like, I did it wrong. You know, I didn't do it right. And I look at you and I know you're not perfect, but you do have a lot of good advice for it. And so talk to girls who are in that single season and feeling yeah. like it's just a wash because it's not. And it's very important. Yeah. I think the moment we can start seeing singleness as a gift yes. and not a curse, like yes. that is when it really flips the page for us. Like it, for me, that was like the flip of the switch of, oh, like God is not withholding good from me. There's yeah. a reason that I'm in this season and I'm going to choose to see the season as a gift. Yeah. But I love that you said that <laughs> you're not always perfect. I'm not always perfect. I was not always perfect and I am still not always perfect in my seasons of singleness. And to be quite honest with you, that season that I was talking about when I came out of that four-year relationship, when all of my friends were getting married and getting engaged, that was, I began like carrying that label of singleness around. Like it was something to just like, I, to hate. And it was like traumatizing and I resented it. And it was like a negative label and it was a curse and God, like you're blessing everyone else except to me. Like what the heck? Mm. And I remember that season was so difficult, like really, really difficult for me. And many nights where I did, I cried myself to sleep and I wondered, God, where are you? God, why? And I think God just continued to speak to me. It's so hard for you to see who you are Mm -hmm. and where you are and what I've given you when you're so busy looking at who they are and what they have and what I've given them. And I I actually love this because we kind of talked about this last time I saw you, just the whole idea of like same team mentality. And I remember God spoke to me like her win is not your loss. Like her victory is not your loss. And just because I've given her this blessing, of, you know, of finding her person, of getting married. That's beautiful. That's amazing. But also look at what I'm doing in your life and look at what I've given you. And I think it's so easy for us to like give into that trap of comparison. And I feel like it's, it's really unfair and it's unrealistic because not everyone's at the same page in life and not everyone's at the same pace. And just because God is, is blessing me with opportunities to be able to, you know, do this or do that, that my married friends aren't necessarily getting the opportunity to do. They're getting the opportunity to be married and build a family and and vice versa. And so I just think that when we can stop comparing and competing and start learning to be content with who we are and what God has given us and learn to embrace that, then we can start really tapping into, you know, the potential and the goodness and the fullness of what God has for us. And And I think, and it took my mom, like, honestly, reminding me, I remember there was this one particular moment I was on the way to rehearsal dinner. And I called my mom bawling, crying, and I don't cry. So she knew that there was something like seriously wrong. And I called her crying and I was like, Hey, I, I don't think I can do this. I'm on the way to this rehearsal dinner. And I just realized like, I'm, I'm going to be the only single one sitting at this table. And every single one of my friends are going to be sitting next to their husband. And that's so awkward. That's so embarrassing. They're going to all be talking to their husband. I'm going to be sitting there by myself. And I just was like hysterically crying. And I was like, this is so unfair. Like this is so embarrassing. Like what's wrong with me? You know, I started thinking there was something wrong with me. Like how come it's easier for everyone else? Everyone else has found their person. And she just like reminded me, kind of put me in my place, you know, and she was just like, you know, Maddie, you would rather be sitting at that table single than sitting next to the wrong husband. Mm. You don't want anything before you're ready for it. That's right. And that to me was like so huge because it spoke to me in so many different ways, not just in relationships, but also in life. Like I don't want anything Mm before I'm ready for it. I don't want anything until it's God's best for me. And so then from that place, I was really able to, again, kind of take the focus off of me and put it back on God and just remind myself, I serve a good God, a faithful God who gives good gifts, who loves me. And he is not withholding good from me. And he is not slow in keeping his promises. I think that's like second Peter three, nine, but I I just continue Mm -hmm. to speak like God's word over me over and over again of just, he's not slow in keeping his promises. He sees me, he loves me. Mm -hmm. And, um, just because 
because their blessings and their success and their gifts look different than mine doesn't mean it's better or worse. And so I think that's just something to just cling to if you're in that season of singleness. And this is a season where it is a gift. You're learning who you are. Mm -hmm. You're learning what God has called you to do. And so just run after that with all of your heart and in due time and in due season, like it will happen the way that it's supposed to. And so I just rest in that peace and in that comfort of knowing that. Maddie, that's so good. And I'm so thankful that you're like being real about and honest. Like I was hysterically crying because this was going to be awkward. And like you can acknowledge that because that's real, but also that God is doing something in that time. That's awesome. And just to speak to your same team mentality, I just want to say on this podcast, I think it's so cool that we're doing this together because people do live in a, I guess, competitive mindset, comparison mindset. And we're two girls who are doing similar things. Like we both have written books that honestly say a lot of yeah. similar things. We both are speaking, yeah. both been on TV, both have Instagram platforms trying to do this thing. And it would be really easy for us to be competitors. But I just want to say yeah. on a recording publicly for everyone to hear, <laughs> I am so glad that you're here. I'm so mm. glad you're doing this. I'm so glad that yeah. you are doing ministry. Your gain is like you said, is not my loss. Your gain is my gain. Yeah. And I can only say that because Amen. I'm not trying to build my platform. I'm trying to build his kingdom. Mm-hmm. And you are too. Amen. And so it's not about you growing or me growing. It's about the kingdom building. And that is the mm. most freeing thing to be able to sit on the other side of a screen with a beautiful girl who's doing great things and be able to cheer you on. Because I can say in my mm. life, I haven't always been like that. And there are times where yeah. temptation comes in and it's like, oh, like she's doing this and she's doing that. And then that's what I'm yeah. trying to do. And like, I don't ever want to live like that. I'm like, yeah. I don't yeah. want to be like that. I don't want to live like that. And any thoughts that come into my mind are not from God. And so mm. I just want to say to you, I'm, I'm so stoked for you. I'm so glad you have this book out. I'm so thankful for the wisdom you shared in this podcast. It is no um, it is no coincidence God had you in seminary school and with parents who um, you got to learn from and grow up from and then put you in the spotlight because the wisdom and the words that are coming out of your mouth are literally going to break chains off people and set people free. Mm. And so I'm so thankful mm. you chose that path of taking the hard route so that all those people yeah. are one day going to walk to heaven with you instead of taking the other route. I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you're on this podcast. And just also for the listeners who are listening, who love this podcast and loved our conversation, Maddie's actually doing a book club in my Ella Sister app right now. And it's going to be so, this is just like the sneak peek of all the stuff going on in book club. So if yeah. you want to go through this book with friends, go buy this book now, go to the Ella Sister app and join our book club. Um, Maddie's going to mm-hmm. be leading in it as well as I am. And so come join us in the Ella Sister app. And Maddie, thanks again for being on the Well That's Good podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I love you. I value you. I'm for you. And I'm just blessed to know you and to get to do this life with you. So thank you for your kind words. Thanks for having me. And I hope everyone you know who got to listen just feels encouraged and empowered to know that whatever moment they are in right now, this is the moment they were made for. Right. Not for the moments of yesterday, not for the moments of tomorrow. Your moments can't be stolen or robbed from you, from others, or from even the enemy. It is God-ordained. You were destined for such a time as this and you were made for this moment. And so I hope you feel encouraged by that. So love you guys. Woo!